Okay, we are in the midst of a drought of no rain that uh, James and Jesus said would be three and a half years. And it came to pass on 1 Kings chapter 18, notice 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. We're not only dealing with the time approximately B.C. 9, 10, but we're also dealing with the time of the tribulation period. Where Ahab becomes a type of Antichrist. Elijah, we've seen in Revelation, shows up. And one of the things he does is no rain. And other things. Moses, and what rain is left over, what water is there, Moses is turning to blood. And then they're doing other things at their own will. And anybody would try to hurt them, the Bible says fire comes out of their mouth. So, and fire is not going to come out now. Elijah is the only man in the Bible that never dies. And I'm not finished because you say, well, Enoch didn't die. But Elijah is coming back to die. Moses died and was buried. It's going to be again and going to die again. Elijah is just gone for a while, then coming back. And going to die. And it came to pass after many days. That the word of the Lord came to Elijah. In the third year saying. So it's been three years. According to Jesus and James 5.17. We got six months left. It's been hard. We'll see in a moment. Go show thyself unto Ahab. And I will send rain upon the earth. But well, we already read it was at the mouth of Elijah. And God's going to call for at the end of it. God and Satan are in charge of the weather. You say, why Satan? In Job chapter 1, he caused a whirlwind to come and destroyed Job's sons and daughters in the house. And there was fire from heaven that devoured some of his animals. And Elijah went to show Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Syria. Uh, Samaria, excuse me. This is the only area where this king reigns at this drought. Looks like there's no drought in Jerusalem. Looks like there's no drought in Egypt. There's no drought on the other side of Jordan River. Just Samaria. And Ahab, going back in a little bit of time here, and Ahab called Obadiah, that's not Obadiah the book, which was the governor of his house, type of Joseph. Now Obadiah feared God, look at the parentheses. Parentheses in your Bibles, this is a very important note, pay attention, write this down. Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. But he's in a house where there is no God, Jehovah, Lord. He's in a house where they've got Baal. He's in a house where they got calves. He's in a house where they got uh, Jezebel. And you're going to say, well, well, God's going to use him. I would assume that he feared God greatly that he would go down to Jerusalem. For it was so, we're still in the parentheses, when Jezebel, there she is again, let's learn something else about Jezebel, cut off the prophets of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's Jehovah. We're going to learn later on that there's going to be 450 prophets all together for the pagan gods. But when it came to Jehovah's prophets, she's going to kill them. That Obadiah took a hundred prophets, one hundred of them, and hid them by by fifty in a cave. There was another hiding in a cave. In Genesis 19.30, Lot and his two daughters, fleeing destruction of God. Here, there's the destruction of the woman Jezebel, the wicked woman, being protected. Lot. And his family that were left over were protected. As long as they followed the angel's words, which Lot's wife did not. And fed them with bread and water. Almost like Elijah, but there's no flesh. And the parentheses. 
So here are men of God, prophets of the Lord, in a vast tribulation period, and they are hid. That's what's going to happen to the Jews in the tribulation period. They're going to be hid. Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was sick, you healed me. So here are Jews set aside under Ahab and Jezebel. Amongst a period of time of Elijah, and they're being taken care of. That's what, that's going to happen in the tribulation period. While Jezebel, who becomes a type of Antichrist, is searching out these prophets, maybe the 144,000, and killing them, and martyring them. And the Bible says that they were beheaded at the altar. And they're drinking the blood of these saints. Why drink grape juice or alcohol beverage if it's supposed to be Jewish blood? Why not just drink the pure Jewish blood? That's what's going to happen in the tribulation period. That mass will become real blood. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, I wonder if Ahab knew. You know, isn't there, there's just things in the Bible like, Lord, we could use a little more detail here. Because this guy is under the threat of Jezebel if she finds out what he's done with these hundred prophets. Go into the land of Israel and all fountains of water. So there's still some water. Unto all the brooks, there's still some brooks. The brook that Elijah was at dried up. Not many. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses. And mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. Now look at that, animal priority over humans. And it's, why horses and mules? And then it says beasts. I would assume that goes cattle and everything else. But we're coming to the point right now, animals are dying. That's our beef. That's our lamb chops. That's our meat. Can't say pork, because they don't have pork. That's our fowls. Certain birds they could eat. If we can only find a little grass. So evidently the grass is going. Do you know that one third of the trees and one third of the vegetation in the tribulation period has gone? Man, you are reading. People fall in love with Revelation. Have you read the Old Testament? Oh, it's a dull, boring book. Here's Revelations right here. No water, famine, Elijah, there's no plants. That's exactly what's in Revelation. And had I seen, I'd just seen that right now with the vegetation. I would have ran the verse in Revelation, we would run to it. So they divided the land, and I mean, if you want to look it up in Revelation, it's one third. Green. Look up one third of green. I don't know if it says grass, but trees and all that. Tree huggers are not going to be happy in the in Revelation, in the tribulation period. And then it reads about the oceans and the waters turning to blood. Thank you, Moses. And we're having drought. Grass is drying up. Thank you, Elijah. And that's why they're having a merry making of Christmas time when they're both dead. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. You go that side, I go this side. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him. I Obadiah. Oh, boy. And he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou my lord Elijah? <laughs> now, that's bad news. And you say, well, what for? Isn't this Obadiah, isn't he right with God? Yes, he is. But we're going to see. He's not right with... Elijah's not right with Ahab. There's trouble. And he answered, I am. Go tell thy Lord, which would be Ahab. Look at that. Isn't Ahab a wicked king? Isn't he a muscle down underneath his wife? Does he not have no authority but given to his wife? And Elijah says... Go tell that stinking idiot that should not be in office. No, he does not. 
Go tell thy Lord. He's king. I don't care if he's a bad king. You show him honor and respect to the title of the office. And if you don't, you violate both scriptures of Old and New Testament. Behold, Elijah's here. Now that's bad news. And we'll see. And he said, now watch. Elijah's here. Watch his reaction. Obadiah. What have I sinned? <laughs> we all sinned. That thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab. You were just with Ahab. You two just, just said, we're going to go get some grass. He's talking to you. You seem to be getting well. Elijah pops up. He says, go Ahab. Say, hey, I'm here. And this, oh, oh, oh. what did I do wrong? <laughs> thy servant to the hand of Ahab to slay me. If I go back and tell him that you're here. Ahab's going to kill me. Seems like they were having a good fellowship together before. Their agreement. You go this way? Okay, I'll go that way. Let's go get some grass. Sure, no problem. Then Elijah shows up. Notice how Elijah keeps popping up. Where did Elijah come from? On this time. In the beginning, Elijah just shows up to King Ahab. You're wicked, you're vile, and all that. And then he just shows up along the way, by God, in the path of Obadiah. Why didn't God send Elijah to the path of Ahab? God told Elijah, go to Ahab. And the, the, the providence of God was he didn't meet Ahab. He met Obadiah. That's weird. He would figure the Lord would put Ahab and Elijah <laughs> right in the head of each other. That's what I would think. But I'm not God. As the Lord thy God liveth. Alright. That's an oath. That's an oath of God. There is no nation or kingdom. Jewish or Gentile. Whether my Lord Ahab. Look at the respect. Though as wicked as he is. As, as wimpy as he is. Has not sent to seek thee. Ahab has sent spies, soldiers, anybody who can, in every nation for one purpose. To find you, Elijah. And you had to come across to me? You want me the bearer of bad tidings? Thank you very much. Why is God angry with me? The first impact that Obadiah gets is, as soon as, as, soon as Ahab hears this, he's going to kill me. This is terrible news. I'm going to kill the messenger. And when they say, said, excuse me, he is not here. Elijah's not here, I'm sorry. I haven't seen him. Don't even know who you're talking about. He, Ahab, took an oath of the kingdom and nation. All right, you say Elijah's not here? Yes. You swear by Assyria, he's not here. You swear by the town of Naphtali, he's not here. You swear by Bethel, that you're in charge of this town, he's not here. I swear by Bethel, he's not here. Ahab is serious when it comes to, to searching for Elijah. That he found not. Nowhere. Taking an oath in a court. To tell the truth. I swear to God to tell the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. I have not seen Elijah. And now. Thou sayest go tell thy Lord. Behold Elijah's here. Oh man what did I do wrong. Why am I the bearer of the bad news. And it shall come to pass. Now watch this. This is weird. As soon as I am gone from thee. As soon as I turn around and go get him. He's going to obey Elijah. Though he's afraid to. That the spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit. Shall carry thee whither I know not. That's kind of weird. Because that's exactly what the Holy Spirit is going to do with Elijah. This guy is a prophet. He says listen. Okay. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to go get King Ahab. And you know what's going to happen? God's going to take you. God's going to rapture you out of here. Wow. 
Because that's exactly what happens to Elijah. Where did he get this idea from? He is afraid of bearing the bad news to Ahab. And his, one of his, his pleas is, you're not going to be here no longer. And it's not because you're going to take off. It's because God's going to take you. And another aspect is he could be thinking is, God's going to protect you because as soon as Ahab sees you, he's killing you. So God might put you in protection. And when I say Ahab, he's over here, and you're not there. Let's read on. The whether I know not. I don't know where God will put you. So when I come and tell Ahab, see, he's, he's obedient to Elijah, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. If I bring this bad news to him that you're here and you're not here, I'm dead. So he doesn't trust Ahab, and he doesn't trust the Lord with Elijah. It's weird. It's a compromise. It's a compromise. If I go do it, maybe you'll take off. Maybe the Holy Spirit will do it. But you know, I'm afraid to go to Ahab and tell him because, and then, what if you're not here when we get back? And I'm going to bring him false news. The fact is that these nations and these people and these kingdoms said, I swear to tell the whole truth. I have not seen Elijah. You want me to go up and say Elijah's here. And when you're not here, well, thank you very much. I'm dead. He's kind of like backing out of it, but like Moses with God. Well, I, I, I'm not elegant to speak. Well, who made man's mouth? Well, Lord, I'm. Kind of excuse, but it's kind of weird that he throws the Holy Spirit in there. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord, Jehovah, from my youth. Listen, I love the Lord. I want to do right. I've been brought up in the Lord. What do you want me to do? You are an enemy of Ahab and Jezebel. And this is just only the rain. We haven't got to Mount Carmel. And that's only going to aggravate Jezebel even more. But three years of no rain and Ahab had it. Was it not told my Lord, speaking to Elijah, not the Lord Lord, but Elijah. It was a title of respect. It's a, what we say, Mr. Have, was it not told Mr. Elijah... What I did when Jezebel slew the prophets. Now it's interesting because when we come over here, verse 4, Jezebel cut off the prophets. That definition, these two verses, cut off means slay, slew, killed them. Jezebel is murdering the prophets of the Lord Jehovah. That's what's going to be happening in the tribulation period. It's happened present punch right here. And Ahab's doing nothing to stop it. And they both got this universal religion tied into golden calves and Baal that wears a little sun disc around his head. Because he's the sun god. And actively drinking blood. We're in the tribulation period. We're in the present day, 2018. That happens seven days a week. Listen, that mass does not just happen on Saturday and Sunday. There are people from the Protestant and the Catholic Church, they go seven days a week, if not two or more days. Slew the prophets of the Lord. How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Now the Holy Spirit told that in those parentheses. He's not lying. Look how he's looking to God in the Old Testament by works. Lord, look at my salvation. Is it the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins? Absolutely not. Is it believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? Absolutely not. What are you trusting in, Obadiah? I took your prophets, Lord. I protected them. I hid them. And I'm giving them food and water. Now, I'm good, right? Now do you see where David says, My salvation? I can't say my salvation because there is nothing I can do. There is not by works that we are saved by faith. 
By righteousness. By righteousness. So he's pleading to Elijah, hey, <laughs> am I not doing good? Now you want my head. And now the, now say his go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah's here. Look how many times he said that. Is that really the message you want? He's over there. Hey, wait, what did you say? He's over there. He, he went that way. I'm going to go get some more grass. And he shall slay me. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, that's an oath, be whom I stand, God, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And we're going to stop right there. And we're going to get to more and more. This, this chapter might have many breakups in it. And now can you just imagine, Ahab, Obadiah, where's the grass? <laughs> I wish I had grass for you right now. What? I got news for you. What? Man, come on, spit it out. We got to get the work done here. I ran into Elijah. Where is he? Yeah, that's what he wants. He wants you. Ooh, where is he? Because look, it's the last thing. Ahab went to meet Elijah. That's not good. That's not, you know... I, I brought a sandwich or I brought a meal so we can sit down. This is not, hey, how do you do it? Put your hand out. No, it's not. And it's almost maybe like, it's kind of interesting because, I want to get the reference here. Revelation 11.6. Revelation 11.6. I got this one there. Revelation 11, 6. Revelation 11, 6. Keep saying that so I don't forget. Let's look at Elijah 11, 6. These have power to shut up heaven, that it rain, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. There's Elijah. And have power over wars to turn them to blood, probably Moses, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Doesn't that maybe look like Ahab coming to Elijah? I'm going to. Ahab doesn't kill him, but doesn't that look like here comes Ahab, here comes Elijah? Ahab's ready to kill. Revelation 8. Seven. Revelation 8, 7. Here's that other. And the fifth angel sounded and, and followed hail and fire mingled with blood. That's almost like Sodom. And, there, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burnt up. All green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded as it were a great mountain burning with fire. That's... Doesn't that mountain you of Mount Sinai? That'd be interesting to watch with fire. I follow with fire. Cast in the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures, whales, save the whales, manatees, which were in the sea and had life, died. A third part of the ships were destroyed. And a third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven. There are meteorites coming to hit the earth, by the way. Burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called worm, Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wood, yeah, Wormwood. Say that slowly. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Alright, we got an event going on. We've got Moses calling for blood upon the waters. We got Elijah saying, hey, there's going to be no rain. What else do you want to do, Moses? Let's have some fun. Meanwhile, a third of the trees and a third of the grass is gone. That brings us back to Kings 18. And we got to find some grass for the animals. The sea is, has been turned to blood. Thank you, Moses. 
this meteorite star falls from heaven and what waters there are left are turned to bitterness. That's what's going on in 1 Kings 18. Yeah, there's water, but it's not good enough. Very much is the water troubled in the tribulation period. Not only did Elijah in the tribulation period going to say, okay, no water, what water's left is blood. What water's left after that is bitter and it causes death. Man, I thank God I'm saved. I don't need to worry about the mark. I don't need to worry about the vials of trouble. I will not be here when that happens. Now, if you want to be here, lots of luck. Because your bottled water is going to be soiled by, there will be no bottled water. There will be a bottle of bloody water called Bloody Mary. Or it will be bottled water with warm wood. I can say that slowly. It'll be a tough time. Don't you see why they get happy when Moses and Elijah are killed by the bees? Hey, here's Elijah. Look me at him. There it is.